Hello, and welcome to the next installment of Law & Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one, we'll be looking at the story from Puppet Combo's survival horror masterpiece, Murder House. With their signature low-poly graphics and their synth soundtracks, Puppet Combo made a game that was, quite simply, terrifying. If you're watching this and you aren't subscribed yet, you definitely should, as there are going to be more great Law & Order videos coming, and the channel is nearly at 100,000 subscribers. But anyway, that's enough of an intro, let's get into the video. On the 1st of May 1988, a news crew arrived at an abandoned house formerly belonging to a now executed serial killer named Anthony Smith, known as the Easter Ripper. The crew are there to shoot a story about him. The news crew, consisting of producer Gary, presenter Dana, cameraman Tom and intern Emma, arrived to find no trace of a man named Jerry, the real estate agent Gary had paid $50 to and they had planned to meet at the property. Jerry was supposed to leave the door unlocked for them, but of course hadn't, so Emma is sent around the house to try and find a way inside. She does through the basement window and lets the crew in through the front door. After bringing the equipment into the living room and restoring power, the crew get to work. Gary at some point decides that the story is boring and needs some shine, so due to the rumours of it being a haunted house, decides to cover Emma with a white sheet and make her run behind Dana appearing as a ghost. Classic. Naturally, the crew get hungry whilst filming this piece of ratings gold, so Gary tasks Emma with going into town to get them some pizzas. However, Emma finds that their van has been destroyed and the gate is locked. She finds a sinister note taped to the windscreen, announcing that an easter egg hunt has begun. Emma tells the crew and despite this current situation, Gary decides they should keep filming, despite the fact that Tom the cameraman has gone missing. After filling in for him, Emma goes into the basement and finds Tom down there. One by one, over the course of a few minutes, Emma finds Jerry, the real estate agent's body, and witnesses Gary and Dana get killed by the Easter Ripper, who is now a very real threat. She finds a videotape with the murder of Tom. The Easter Ripper continues to hunt Emma while she looks for a way out of the now locked house. The game with the Easter Egg Hunt is still very much on, and after finding a torture chamber hidden away in the basement, she finds the four eggs and places them into the basket. This reveals an exit, and this exit itself leads to a greenhouse next to the property. To Emma's shock, the Easter Ripper is revealed to be Tom. Tom explains that Anthony was his brother who took the fall for his crimes. Tom says that despite Anthony taking the fall for him, his murderous cravings bubbled up after suppressing them for so long, and he is now out to avenge his brother's death. After Tom attacks Emma, she grabs a shotgun and shoots Tom, supposedly killing him. But in classic horror movie style, Tom stands up and tries to kill Emma. But then the ground begins to shake, and all the dead children who were buried in the greenhouse come back to life and kill Tom. Emma runs out of the greenhouse to safety and escapes just as a massive bright light shines inside the greenhouse. So when Emma leaves the greenhouse, she hears the word cut. This whole thing was just a movie. After explaining her displeasure at how dumb the movie's ending is, the director states that the actor Nick, who was playing the Easter Ripper, skipped town two days before they wrapped up the shoot. The actress who plays Emma, named Sarah, goes to leave the set and realizes that she forgot her car keys, so she goes to grab them. Deciding not to attend the after party, Sarah leaves and drives away, but in one last twist, it seems that the Easter Ripper is in her car. The game then ends. So it seems that none of what happened in the main part of the game actually really happened at all. Or did it? We find out during a conversation with Dan, the actor who plays Gary, that there were actually murders in the house, but Dan states that this is just rumours. A lot of people think that this ending to the game is just an Easter egg, due to the murder of being an Easter Bunny, or an alternate ending perhaps. Maybe the Easter Ripper in the back of the car was the real Tom Smith, and that he killed Nick, the actor that was initially playing the Ripper. Anyway, let's look into the story behind the Easter Ripper. In March 1979, Tom Smith got a seasonal job working as an Easter Bunny at the local shopping mall in Monroe, Michigan. The Ripper had a specific kind of victim, young children. He would use his position as an Easter Bunny to prey on these kids. The Easter Ripper would kidnap and imprison children. This took a turn for the Easter Ripper though, when one of the young boys he kidnapped in 1983, named Randy Martinez, managed to escape in 1985 and alerted the police. Being the owner of the house, and in a desperate attempt to save his brother, Anthony Smith fronted up and confessed to the murders. 
He was eventually charged with 11 counts of child murder and after two years on death row, he was executed. Now, as mentioned before, Tom tried to live a clean life and suppress his murderous urges, but lo and behold, they rose up again. And after his brother was executed for his crimes and after Tom had managed to keep his job as the Easter Bunny, he started to kidnap children again. Now, when booting up the game, the player has the option to play through a prologue, which tells us a bit about the Easter Ripper through Justin, a young boy who was in a shopping mall and had to have his photo taken with the Easter Bunny. After the photo, Justin falls asleep inside a photo booth, likely having been given chocolate eggs with tranquilizers in them after the photo, and has got stranded inside the mall, which is now closed for the day. Whilst looking for a way out, Justin spots a number of missing children's posters on the wall of the shopping mall, but nonetheless, he finds a key and manages to unlock a door, finding himself in the maintenance corridor. Walking down the hallway, Justin comes face to face with, yep, the Easter Ripper, and is forced to retreat to a nearby bathroom, where he hides in one of the stalls. After waiting for the Easter Ripper to leave, Justin explores the area in a further attempt to escape. He finds the mall's staff room and speaks to the janitor Jack, who tells a terrified Justin to stay in the office while he goes to check it out. Justin hides under the table in fear after the lights go out and hears footsteps. Justin is eventually caught and judging from this scene, is killed. Then of course, three years later in 1988, Tom joins up with a local news crew who are shooting a piece on the Easter Ripper. And as you know, he kills the crew and Jerry the real estate agent for their attempts to further smear his brother's name. So there are many pointers as to how many children went missing or were essentially victims of the Easter Ripper's depravity. He would make the imprisoned children go on Easter egg hunts in the greenhouse. He would put razor blades inside the chocolate eggs and the children who were really hungry would bite into them, causing deep cuts inside their mouths. Other times he would make them hunt for the eggs while he stalked and hunted them and killed them. We obviously find the posters in the mall which show a young child called Mildred who went missing in 1981 and Daniel who went missing in April 1985. In the basement, upon finding the torture rooms, Emma finds notes written by the Easter Ripper's young victims. This one makes mention of the blonde girl, another child called Gracie, and a child called Randy who of course later escaped. One note in particular mentions a child hearing adults shouting and crying a lot. Maybe the Easter Ripper kidnapped adults too, parents who had potentially gone to the house looking for their missing children maybe. But hey, that's pretty much it. Not much to this game in terms of storyline. A short game at just over an hour, but I definitely recommend it if you're into the whole PS1 low poly graphics scene. As mentioned before, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do it. Leave a like on the video too, and leave a comment below on your thoughts. But for now, as always, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.